Welcome to the Chronicles of Justice, the Yolo County District Attorney's podcast series. Our motto is to seek justice and do justice for the victims of crime of Yolo County. This month's podcast is the Older Americans Month. We're going to be discussing today what the Yolo County District Attorney's Office is doing regarding outreach, services, and prosecution for the older American population within Yolo County. My name is Kevin Clark and I work in the Elder Protection Unit here at the office and I'm going to be joined today by Donald who is a victim of financial elder abuse as well as Heather Blair, a victim services advocate with the Yolo County DA's office. I'm also going to be joined by Arnell Sanford, a volunteer with the Yolo County District Attorney's Office Elder Protection Unit and I'm joined by Ryan Cousins, a supervising deputy district attorney with our office as well. Okay, uh, let's get started with uh, Donald. Thank you for joining us today. Can you please give us a summary about how you were taken advantage of, how you came into contact with our office? My uh, story starts, I guess, with uh, these house cleaners that we had hired. My wife hired them out of the phone book, and they were not vetted in any way, and I actually was lucky to get a criminal. (laughs) She stole my jewelry, she stole my checkbook, and she progressed writing checks. And she was caught for that one. That's when I was notified by from my bank and they, uh, we took a lot of hassle to go down there and change all your identification and all your your paperwork and get a new, new account and transfer your money because and especially if you're in a wheelchair. It's hard to get around downtown Davis. The bank notified you. Where did it go yeah. from there? Did you well, contact then, our office? No, I, not a, not a right away. Um, I talked to the police. I called the police, and they came out, and I, I built up a rapport with one that continually came out. He was a night shift guy, and he recommended your service to me. And so I took a chance, and I had to think about it for a while, and I called Heather. She's the advocate that I was assigned to. And um, she kind of led me through what I should do. So she suggested I go down to her hearing where she was getting sentenced. And I did that. It 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 was very difficult to get there. She said, come on down. So I came down, presented it to the court. And the court um, got aware of what that girl had did to me. And what's, what I, what's, what's the serious thing about it is, it was the jewelry, and uh, that was one of the ones she stole. So she stole, and she stole my wedding rings too, as well as my oh, complete book of checks. And she was forging my wife's name on checks. How much was the total amount uh, that she stole from you? Okay, the total amount in jewelry it was uh, $8,300. And... Uh, She's been ordered to do restitution, and it's what she's doing now at the rate of $50 a month. It's going to take her 10 years. She committed felonies against me, and I've been victimized, and I don't have to feel like I'm the one that did something wrong because I called the police. Heather got me down there, and we presented this to the court. They sentenced her to, what was it, four months? She got, oh, I think it's 120 yeah, 120 days. days. Yeah, she got four or six months. Uh, she had to serve, and they they took her right there and handcuffed her. And I was down there because of your service, and we presented this to the judge. And now she has to pay restitution. She paid all her fines. I had no problem with that because I thought that she would really be paying me back. I need my money. If ever you get somebody to do something in your home, you watch them all the time. You always watch them. But make sure that they've been checked out and, and authorized. They've been vetted by, by somebody, by wherever they, whoever they work through. And I didn't have no need to ever have my life ruined like this. I'm a senior citizen. I'm going to be 69 years old. There's no reason for me having to be subjected to these things. Well, anyway, the police gave me your, uh, Heather, your number. And I started trusting you. And we ended up in there. And then... It turned around, and it's, now her life is going to be a little bit, you know, and she's not going to be so happy with going to jail. And she didn't look very happy when she left. And what was the last thing she said? She says, I'm sorry this day happened. I wish I never would have did this. Being in a wheelchair and not able to walk 
And to have somebody to come and violate you like this is horrible. <laughs> and I just want you all know, whoever hears this, that make sure whoever comes into your house, you, you watch them very carefully and make sure that they are well checked out. Thank you very much, Donald. Now we're going to uh, turn our attention to <coughs> Heather Blair, a victim services advocate with the Yolo County District Attorney's Office. Heather, what services exist for older Americans from the Yolo County District Attorney's Victim Services Department? Thank you, Kevin. So I'd just like to say that the Yolo County Victim Services Program is one that can actually provide victim advocate services in cases like this. What we do essentially is support the victim through the court process mm -hmm. and then work with them and their families to make sure that they have the necessary referrals to other social services or financial services to help with the effects of being victimized by individuals who choose to take advantage of the elder population. What are some of the challenges of helping this specific population? Oftentimes, especially like in Donald's case, there is a huge delay in reporting. That can be a, a grave challenge because there is a lot of emotional trauma that can build up between the time that someone decides to report uh, being taken advantage of financially and the time that they are referred to victim services. So a great challenge is being able to assist them after they've already been through so much emotionally. Um, I guess another one of the great challenges is coming to work with the families that are involved. It's not just one individual that becomes victimized when crimes like this occur. It's generations of families that are, are victimized. Mm -hmm. So making sure that we keep in touch with all the different family members that have a right to be informed can be a huge challenge. Another great challenge is transportation mm -hmm. to court. Um, working with... Like if the, se the senior citizen has a disability, yes. they might not be able to drive themselves or if they have a wheelchair or yes. other things like that. It can. I would say another great challenge is that oftentimes individuals simply don't want to come to court. They've mm -hmm. already been through enough stress that just the idea of coming to court and being involved any further is is something that they don't want to do. And that is a challenge to us because then their voice is not heard in court. Mm -hmm. They are not seen by the people who are really trying to advocate for them and prosecute the cases for them. If we, if we don't see them, it's like they don't exist. Mm -hmm. So that's why it's important that they're there to give that victim impact statement yes. at the sentencing? Absolutely. Also, are there any <clears throat> distinct services that our victim services uh, program provides? Well, I do want to mention that our office is capable of providing transportation to court for individuals that aren't able to have their family members bring them to court or aren't able to drive themselves to court. Um, not only that, but we do provide, we have a wheelchair in the office that we can use and it's come in handy many times. We also have a court comfort support therapy dog um, who has accompanied uh, individuals while they are being interviewed by attorneys or while they are going to court and having to testify in court. It's um, a program that um, we are very proud of. I mean, the other distinct services are really being able to refer the clients that we work with, especially in cases of elder financial abuse, to adult protective services um, and to the other agencies in the county that are able to assist the victims of, of elder financial abuse. Thank you, Heather. And now we're going to turn our attention to Arnell, who is a volunteer with our Elder Protection Program. How did you become a volunteer at the Yolo County District Attorney's Office? Thank you, Kevin. I'm glad to be here. I do like volunteering. I started first at the Senior Center Computer Club, and in that we have a monthly meeting, and that's when I first met Kevin. He spoke about scams and frauds for seniors, and everybody really liked what he said. Then the next time I saw him was at a shredding event, and he said, I know you, and I said, I remember you too. Well, then I went to the Senior Resource Fair in October of 2015, 
and I listened to all the presentations, and after it was over, he was to the back of the room, and I gave him my card, and I said, Kevin, if you need any help, proofreading or anything else, I would appreciate a call. I like to volunteer. One week later, he, he was on the phone. So the rest is history, and I've worked with him five or six months now. What is your role? What are you okay. doing to help out the Elder Protection Unit? Answer your phone calls that seniors leave messages for. They, they talk the, about the, the, the fake IRS phone mm-hmm. calls, the fraud calls and they get, the letters. they calling them, wanting their Social Security number. Well, nobody calls on the phone for that kind of information. Being ever vigilant of who you give the information to. And we can't always prosecute because the perpetrator changes their phone number. They move. They change their address. How do you uh, mm-hmm. get them to court? They're international many times yes. where they're calling from. What are some of the advantages of being a peer of this population and being able to connect with them on the phone when you call them back? Well, I've been a victim of a fraud myself. Been there, done that. And, and so when you're speaking with these uh the uh, people that call into our office mm-hmm. to the Elder Protection mm-hmm. Unit, what are some of the things that you're talking to them about? Well, the big one was the IRS, and I said they never contact you about that. And sometimes uh, they say, well, I paid them X amount of dollars already, and they keep wanting more. But some people, they're hesitant to call, so I encourage making a call. Yeah, so you're able to let them know you know what, what What happened to you is is there's fraud involved and you need to stop giving money. That's right. Okay, well, thank you. Um, Arnell is uh, very helpful in the Elder Protection Unit. Now we're going to turn our attention to Supervising Deputy District Attorney Ryan Cousins uh, with the Yolo County District Attorney's Office. How does the Yolo County DA's Office prosecute elder financial abuse cases? Uh, Thank you, Kevin. So basically what happens is in the penal code, um, there's a separate crime for crimes against the elderly. It's penal code section 368. Mm -hmm. And what 368 says is there's there's two subdivisions that deal with what I would call harmful felony conduct. And uh, basically one of the sections has felony consequences for uh, abuse that would amount to um, possible death or great bodily injury. Half of the half of the 368 deals with financial crimes, and it basically, because um, the victim of the crime could be either elder or a dependent adult, so somebody who has a disability of any age would also qualify. Um, crimes, financial crimes, or physical crimes against them, there's an enhanced punishment. So, for example, on the financial side, um, if you steal or embezzle or take by fraud or trick from somebody whom you know to be over the age of 65 or with a disability, then um, it carries more prison. And also there's an exception for crimes against elders to even uh, Proposition 47 in the theft area. So basically what the law accounts for is these are uh, particularly vulnerable victims um, and the, the cases present special challenges and because the the victims tend to be so vulnerable, um, they've attached this greater punishment. And what are some of the difficulties with dealing with these kinds of cases here at the office? Part of the challenges uh, involve uh, particular challenges for the victim. Um, the victim may be someone who's either been independent for a while or is just starting to be independent, and um, they can justifiably feel that their independence is threatened by participating in a prosecution because they were taken advantage of. Unfortunately, probably most of the time, the thefts are by close family members. Mm -hmm. And so the lines between what is a gift and what is not a gift and what's permissible and what's not permissible are sometimes blurred Mm -hmm. because um, often the elderly are in a position where they have to place greater and greater trust into people that are more and more likely as they get that trust to try and take um, these nest eggs that these Mm. seniors have built up. And of course, you know, one fact that's often forgotten but can't be stated enough is, you know, with a a senior citizen, once the money is taken, it's gone. If somebody steals $10,000 from one of us, you know, we... We can earn that money back, but with a senior citizen, it's it's gone, and it's gone for good. The cases have to really be processed quickly because, believe it or not, the, the financial institutions from which you need the documents 
actually get rid of records alarmingly fast. Wow. Um, very, very fast. I mean, huge amounts of money can be taken, and they just they deal with so much information that they have to purge relatively quickly. So getting the financial documents quickly is mm -hmm. crucial. And so all those things present challenges to um, doing the cases. But, you know, they're, of course, also some of the most rewarding. I mean, if you, if you can get a conviction, um, it's great vindication for the uh, senior citizen often. And um, if you're lucky, you can get restitution. Okay, well, thank you. As we're coming to a conclusion, are there any parting thoughts? Okay, this is Heather Blair, the victim advocate. I just wanted to revisit the idea of challenges that the senior population faces when they're victimized and taken advantage of financially. Um, often a challenge in cases in the criminal justice system is helping people understand why this has happened to them and helping them to further understand that they did not put themselves in any sort of particular position to be taken advantage of. Um, but oftentimes this happens because offenders have drug problems gambling problems and or personal financial debts that they're trying to settle and they're so desperate that they take advantage of people that have decided to trust them with um, with their homes and with their lives and so helping to manage a senior's expectation of the court process and what is reasonable to expect in the outcome of a case can be very challenging this unfortunately does lead to negative health effects and um, negative effects on personal relationships, um, not only within families, but within neighborhoods. And I just wanted to make sure that we highlight that and help seniors understand that if this happens to them, it is not their fault. The people who do this are the ones that are responsible and need to be held responsible. This is Arnell. I'll be short and sweet. I can tell anybody listening to this, be ever vigilant of your personal information your personal possessions, and be aware. Those few things will save you a lot of grief. Uh, I have a parting thought, and I say, everybody that hears this, don't be afraid to use this service. It will definitely help you. There's no doubt about that. Heather and, their, and all the people that are available to you, you should use it. I mean, use it. There's no question in my mind about it. I was afraid a little bit at the beginning but I, could, I got things done for me that I can't do for myself because I don't understand what the processes are. Okay, thank, thank you so much, Donald. Thank you. Okay, as we're uh, coming to a conclusion today, uh, we want to let you know that the Yolo County District Attorney's Office does take financial elder abuse and physical elder abuse cases very seriously. We are bringing awareness to a vulnerable population when we're doing awareness and prevention messages. And this is what we do in our office as a whole. We fight for justice for those who can't do it for themselves. So in conclusion, I want to thank everyone for listening. Uh, for more information, you can visit our website at www.yolo.da.org or follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram.